Dr. Jeffrey Lane. For those whom Islam has embraced, the greatest witness to God's unremitting, pursuing, sustaining, and guiding love is the Quran. Like a vast, magnificent ocean, it lures you deeper and deeper into its dazzling waves until you are swept into it. But instead of drowning in a sea of darkness as described above, you find yourself immersed in an ocean of divine light and mercy. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm your host, Eddie. Special guest today, Dr. Lane, professor of mathematics, former atheist, author of two best-selling works, Struggling to Surrender and Even Angels Ask, and more, A Journey to Islam in America. Enjoy the show. Subhanallah, How are you, sir? Good. Right. So, Jeffrey, Dr. Jeffrey, like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, your profession? Well, I'm a professor of mathematics. Mathematics. Professor of mathematics at the University of Kansas. Doctor of math. Yes. Yes. <laughs> in Lawrence, Kansas. Okay, good. How long, how long have you been doing this? Well, I've been a professor since I was 28, so that would be, uh, no, 27. So that would be 26 years. 26 years. We brought you on the show because we're interested, we want to know your story, why you chose this beautiful way of life of Islam. But before that, you uh, tell us a little about your history. You were born in America, in the States? Yes. Yeah. 1954. 1954. Yes. All right, long time. Yes. Yeah. So what kind of, what way of it's life? not that long. Yeah, yeah. Not that. <laughs> I'm not ready for the grave, <laughs> necessarily. No, you look quite young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually, the first time I saw you, this was may maybe like five year years ago. Yeah, you don't look like you aged day since. Oh, that's you know? good. Well, yeah. Let's hope it keeps up. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, tell us, the viewers, because you see, nowadays, Islam, there's a stigma attached to it. Mm -hmm. So now, someone as bright as yourself, who's a doctor, who is an intellectual, for someone who is afraid of Islam, who doesn't understand Islam, they want to know why would this man choose Islam as his way of life? Oh, well, <clears throat> I was an atheist before becoming a Muslim. You didn't believe in God? I didn't believe in God. Uh, were, you, were you born into a family of atheists? Or? No, no. My, uh, I grew up in a Roman Catholic family. I went to Catholic school uh, my entire life, from first grade to uh, senior high, in high school. <clears throat> and. Uh, my mother was very, very devout. My uh, wonderful woman, wonderful believer, very, extremely charitable. My uh, father, he believed very much in God and in the Catholic Church, but he had a terrible drinking problem. He was an alcoholic and he was very violent. So, uh, at an early stage of my life, I mean, living with a nightmare of my father's violence, and the target of that violence was usually my mother. And I remember praying when I was a little kid in bed, night after night, you know, please take my father out of, out of our lives. Stop this unending nightmare. The guy was that bad? It was that bad. I thought he was going to kill her. I thought I'd wake up in the morning and not find her there. Of course, that's, I'm a young kid at the time, eight, nine, ten. As you grow older, you realize, oh, this has happened many times, she'll survive. So, but, you know, it, it leaves very deep scars. So when I was 16, uh, uh, you know, it, it created in me doubts about the existence of God. Why would, why would God, this loving God, expose my mother to lifelong tor torment and torture? What sin did she commit to deserve this? Uh, why would he let the strong oppress the weak? Why would he create us to experience such violence and, and suffering in this There's world? nothing wrong with wanting to know the answers to these questions. It's no, natural. of course not. It is yeah. natural, especially when you're living with them daily. So, um, doubts about the existence of God crept in early in my life. And they only got accentuated as I grew older and, you know, we experienced the Vietnam War, experienced the race riots in cities like mine of the 60s, the assassinations of political leaders, it was rampant, or at least it seemed that way at that time. Heroes like John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King get gunned down to replace by the most corrupt rulers that we thought. So, you know, why would God make it this way? The question, which was rooted in my childhood experience, grew as I got older. So when I was 16, since I could never find really, even though I was in Catholic school all of my life, and this is nothing against the Catholics, even though I couldn't find coherent and cogent answers to those questions, 16, I became an atheist. You wanted to know why the 
weak were getting oppressed by the strong. You wanted to know why all this corruption, these in society, and you were looking for answers, and the way the way of life you were brought up to didn't answer well, You questions. have to remember, I'm going to Catholic school every day, you know, and this, again, this is not against the Catholics, but I have many other things going on in my life. I'm exposed to religion every day. What about Christianity? I mean, we understand Christianity, uh, Catholicism is, it has the same kind of creed that yeah. uh, Jesus is God, he's the son of God, he's one in three. So mm -hmm. what if someone says, well, you are in the wrong faith, why didn't you choose Christianity? Were you exposed to that at all? Yeah, well, I was a Christian at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, I was a Christian as I'm a Catholic. I'm what's a the main difference, tell us for the viewers that might not know, what's the difference when you say Catholic and Christian? What, it's just a branch of, it's a sect of Christianity. It's a, it's a sect, so you are, you are yeah. a Christian? Yes. It's just a sect of Christianity. Yeah, it's the largest sect. It's a large, okay, yeah, just so we're right. yeah. So, you know, I'm exposed to religion every day. Uh, it's part of my life, because I go to school every day, and on, and on weekends I go to church. So I have that going on. Meanwhile, I have these big questions looming in my life. Why would God create us here to suffer if he's supposed to be an all-loving God, as I was taught? So I have these contradictions in my life. The mother, my mother, the most saintly woman I have ever known, is suffering this violence and abuse of my father. And sometimes we children also, us children also experience it. And uh, why would God do that? Why would he let innocent people suffer at the hands of more violent criminal people? Um, why wouldn't a perfect God create a more perfect world? Uh, where does evil come from? If everything comes from God, then evil comes from God. And so forth and so on. So, you know, these questions grew, and uh, as, as they grew and became uh, bigger in my life, and they were big to begin with, you know, I, I moved away from the church. Okay, I moved so away from belief in God. This, I just couldn't reconcile it. This was at a quite a young age, 16. 16. So now there is a gap in between 16 and when you came to Islam, which, what age was that? 28. 28. In between them, real short, what were you doing? What kind of life were you living? Well, I just went out and lived my life. Yeah. You know, so I, uh, I tried to live a good life. You know, I, I thought that, you know, I, I didn't think that religions were totally invalid in the sense that the values that they preach were bad. I thought the values that they, religions preach were good. I, I would say I was a humanist. I believe that, you know, a, a, a life becomes worth living, becomes more enjoyable, becomes uh, more serene and peaceful, the more you reach out to other people and help them. So, you know, that part I took from religion. It was just the theology, the existence of a supreme being that made this world so chaotic. That part I could never accept. Now, we as, as Muslims, ones who surrender and to submit to the will of the creator of the heavens and earth. We know at the end of the day that there's a light at the end of that tunnel. Through all the struggle and the hardship, there is hope at the end of the day. But how did you as an atheist, one who didn't believe in God, was there hope at the end of the day? Was there a light at the end of the tunnel when you would hit rock bottom? And did you ever hit rock bottom that you were like, you know, Call, who would you call out to? Who would you, when you're alone in your room and it's pitch black or you just came from a hard day, you know, the world's on top of you, you feel like it's going to crumble over you, who do you reach out to? Who did you reach out to? Well, I think I pretty much relied on myself. Yeah. You know, was I, that hard? Was that really, did it, well, you just got used to dealing with it or? Well, yeah, I got used to, and I never really had to get used to dealing with it. You know, surprisingly, my life went pretty smooth after I became an atheist. Yeah. Yeah, I went away to college, mm -hmm. got away from the family. I see. You know, uh, got was married, you know, when I was uh, around 21. The marriage didn't last, but it was a peaceful marriage. Yeah. It lasted a couple of years. Uh, I was very successful in school, uh, went, went to graduate school, yeah. uh, did well there. So nothing really went badly. And, you know, but I assumed that if something did go badly, that was just the accident, one of the accidents of life. So where the shift now? If everything was going smooth, you are going to school, then how the shift, why the shift? Oh. From being an atheist to now 